basic business really win. Not in and in gold was we. These was we. This was we. Jungle we and it does we. We will, we will teach you how to. How to ten in Ojibwe. Moen. We will, we will teach you how to. How to ten in Ojibwe. Moen. Bejig Nijnis, we may win. Anin and in gold was we, Nij was we, Nish was we, Janga we, and it was we. We will, we will teach you how to count to ten in Ojibwe, Moen. We will, we will teach you how to count to ten in Ojibwe. back to Buju Nana Buju the podcast sweetie the podcast about Ojibwe language and culture <laughs> I am Nana Buju over here is the lovely and talented Natasha Buju Kakina Awia hello everybody how you doing <laughs> and over here the rock star cartoonist Michael Lyons hey everybody how you doing Michael Lyons, everyone. Oh, I can't believe it. The rock star cartoonist is here today, sweetie. Oh, my goodness. Did you know he wrote a book called, uh, uh, what's it called? He wrote a bunch of books. Yeah, but this one's called Dog and My Ingen. Dog and My Ingen, sweetie. Dog and My Ingen. By Michael Lyons. Hello. Bonjour. One. Bejig. One dog. Bejig on a moche. One wolf. Bejig mahinga. Two. Nige. Two eagles. Nige megazi wog. Three. Niswe. Three bears. Niswe mukwog. Four. Ni win. Four raccoons. Ni win. Ace even nom. Nanin. Five. Five deer. Nanin. Wawa shigeshi wok. Six. Nin gold was way. Six. Crows. Nin gold was way. Ande wok. <laughs> Seven. Nige was way. Seven rabbits. Nige was way. Wabuzu. Eight. Ish was way. Eight squirrels. Ish was way. Misa jidamu. Nine. Janga sway. Nine birds. Janga sway. Benesha young. Ten. Midas way. Ten butterflies. Midas way. Mangua. Me wetch. Thank you. Dog and Maingan by Michael Lines. Available at Amazon.com. <laughs> I love how you say that. <laughs> say what? Amazon.com. Amazon.com. A dog and Maingan is available on Amazon.com. <laughs> 
Well done, Michael. Hey, thanks. You must really like like to draw, huh? Yeah, I love drawing. So, bonjour. <laughs> you know what I want to start? What's that? I'm thinking uh, maybe next week. Let's start a uh, cartoonist corner or something. A little little moment of uh, of you on screen, like talking about cartooning and stuff. I think the kids would like that. Yeah, if you wanna. Yeah. You guys want to see that? More of Michael on here drawing. I want to encourage the kids to draw. They still draw a little bit. They still draw, huh? Yeah, I still meet kids who are like, when I grow up, I'm going to be a cartoonist. I'm always like, warms my heart. It's like, oh, I'm so glad the internet hasn't destroyed your creativity. Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come and get your love, says John Redbone. John Redbone, right? It says, Redbone, come and get your love. Boujou, Niji. Redbone, come and get your love is here, sweetie. Well, boujou, Niji. <laughs> Let's give him a gold star. Gold star right up on the board. Redbone, come and get your love. And hoa, uh, here comes Cousin Missy. Cousin Missy is here, sweetie. Hey, boujou, Missy. How about a silver star by Missy's name? All right. <laughs> Bonjour. And Jim Dunn. Jim's got to put another another pot of coffee on, sweetie. Jim, you go make some of that black medicine water. It'll give you a bronze star. A bronze star for Jim. And as muckety mush, or muckety mush kiki wabu. I always say that weird. <laughs> I know, me too. I'm always like, muckety mush kiki wabu. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I want to pause in the middle of medicine. Muckaday is black. And if you're a real man, that's how you should drink your coffee. Don't be putting milk and sugar in there. That's not our way. It's not our way. No, no. The Colombian way is to drink it black. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. What am I saying, sweetie? Did you know, sweetie? What's that? That's up to say? Is it really? Mm-hmm. This is a opportunity. We're happy. No, it's not. It's Thursday. I didn't up. I didn't update this, sweetie. Uh oh. Wait. What day is it? I think yesterday was opportunity. I think you're right. I'm sorry, guys. It's Neo Gija good. Neo. It's the fourth day or Thursday. I saw Jessica's back, and I got all flustered. <laughs> Hey, Jessica Waboos, Mino Giga Jabe. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Jessica. How's my sister? How's my sister? And Daniel Black, I'm drinking tea. Boujou. Daniel's got some of that Anibish Abu. Anibish Abu? Or is it Anibish? Anibish is a tea leaf, and I think that's what we call cold tea. But Anibish Abu is hot tea because a boo is like what you sip you know like in the word um makere mushkiki wabu yeah wabu means water that you sip a boo is kind of a so anibish a boo is, is tea that you sip cold tea you can guzzle <laughs> yeah you can guzzle the cold tea <laughs> Ruby, Ruby, I'll have you. Ruby, Ruby, you be true. Ruby, Ruby. Wait, what is that song? Maybe, baby, I'll have you. Maybe, baby, you'll be true. Ruby, Ruby is here and she says, Me no giga jabe, everyone. Coffee is on. Yeah, let's all have some coffee. Like I haven't already had four cups. <laughs> I know, me too. Mukere mashkiki wabuz. Says, uh, <laughs> Jessica wabuz has got some of that mukere mashkiki wabuz. She's got some of that black medicine rabbit. <laughs> Daniel Black. Abituse. How dare you swear. Uh, I should be at work. <laughs> you better get, get to work, young man. Anoki. Work. Keep on working. Keep on working. 
I was digging in the yard today when a letter came from Southampton Way. Said, keep on working, keep on working, keep on working. Oh, uh, speaking of working. Yeah. I finally got a copy of the old uh, Dabaji Mun or Dabaji Moen or what do they call it in it? The Cass Lake newspaper? Yeah, the Leech Lake paper. A month late. <laughs> it's hilarious. Old Jean Jean, the dancing machine, Bolio. I'm mowing the lawn there and she comes pulling up in her van. And I just hear this voice behind me. Where are my books? <laughs> it's like, what? She wanted some of your books, huh, Michael? Yeah, did you give them to her? Yeah, I sure did. Uh, but uh, she gave me a copy of the Debajima and there, there was like hum openings working for the res. There was like 50 different jobs that they're looking for to fill in Leech Lake. Really? Yeah. What's going on over there? They can't find people to work? You know what I think it probably is? What's that? It's that stupid UA test. <laughs> yeah, I know, huh? You can't get a job on the reservation if you, if you smoke marijuana at all, ever. They'll fire you on the spot. They'll hire you. And uh, so I've heard. I've heard a story from somebody. I don't want to name names. But let's just call him a, oh, I don't know, rock star cartoonist. Hey. <laughs> uh, I heard allegedly that somebody, I won't name names, to protect the innocent. <laughs> you know. But, uh. You can get hired to work for Leech Lake Reservation. And then on your first day of work, they send you to the casino to pee in a cup. And if you can't pass their drug test, uh, off with your head. You, can't, you cannot work for the people. No. <laughs> That UA test is sacred. You must pass that test. But I think there's a lot of smart, educated people lounging around the res because they can't get work for the tribe. It's all these positions. And nobody can uh, pass that test. But not my problem, I guess. <laughs> you don't think it's your problem? Not at all. I don't want a job. Hey, everybody. What's going on? Hey, sweetie, you want to take a call? A call? Well, sure. What line? On line two. Hello, caller. Um, welcome to the Buju Nana Buju podcast. You're on the air. You have made an ass of me for the last time. Um, I beg your pardon? You little pig, when I get my hands on you, I'm going to straighten your little butt out. Uh, Alec, did you miss dial again? Huh? Who is this? Don't make me shoot you first and then ask questions. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a set of rust. You called the Buju Nana Buju podcast. Oh, I was meant, I was trying to call my daughter. Yeah, I know. You talk to your daughter that way. You ever hear that recording, sweetie? Yeah, I know. It's horrible. Hi, Alec. Hello, Natasha. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Say Nana Bushu. Since I'm on your show, what was the Ojibwe word of the day? Well, um, I can't tell you the word. I, I forgot to update the word, the day. Thursday is Neogija good? Yes, I already know that. Neogija good. But I was I was thinking about talking about truth, lies, and just being dumb. Like what what's the truth? Debwaywin. Debwaywin. Truth. Yeah. What's the truth about what happened on uh, the set of rust? Why did you shoot that lady? That's a Guanamo. That's a lie. I didn't shoot anybody. The Deb Wayne, the truth is, the gun shot her. 
Yeah, right. That's just Bogwano, is he? That's just, that's just being dumb. No! Uh, Gawain! Ni Bogwana Z! Uh, yeah, just Z. <laughs> Very good. You're saying you're not dumb? No, I. it was the gun. I've always been anti-gun, even though I use them all the time in Hollywood. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> but, so, we haven't really gotten that far yet, though. Uh, today's show is actually called um, How to Count to Ten in a Jib Way. And you know what? Uh, let me give you a bit of advice, Mr. Baldwin. Go ahead. Tell me whatever you want. I'm all ears. Uh, maybe before you respond, uh, you count to ten, and you might calm down. You know, you, you don't seem to have good... What do you call that, sweetie, when you can't keep your cool? He, like, can't... He doesn't have good emotional regulation. Emotional regulation, yeah. You don't seem to have good regulating command of your, well, like you said, emotional regulation. So when you feel yourself getting, wanting to shoot the director or something, I didn't shoot anyone, I told you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but you can always count to 10. And so this is how we count to 10 in Ojibwe. All right. Beijig. Beijig. Is one. Nige. Nige is two. This way. This way is three. Ni win. Ni win is four. Nanan. Nanan is five. Nin gold was we. Nin gold was we is uh, six. Nige was we. Nige was we. Seven. Nish was we. Nish was we. Eight. Jongaswe. Jongaswe is nine. And then uh, Midaswe is ten. Midaswe. Let me see if I got this right, Nana Buju. Beijing, one. Nish, two. Niswe, three. Niwen, four. Nanan, five. Ningod waswe, six. Nij waswe, seven. Ish waswe, eight. Jongaswe, nine. And then Medaswe, ten. Yeah, very good. Good job, Alec Baldwin. Thank you, Nan Natasha. Now, if you can figure out, like, just do that. Count like that. Even count in a jibboy. It takes a little longer to count in a jibboy. Before you pick up a phone and angrily call your daughter and be a bad dad of the year. You know, you may, you're a very wise man. Uh, no, no, bojo. Well, thanks, you know. I try. I mean, I, you know, I understand because I, I got my own issues. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but... You could learn from the wisdom, the Nebuakuin, of the Anishinaabe. You've given me a lot to think about. How do you say goodbye in Ojibwe? We don't say goodbye, Alec. We say, I will see you again. Gigawabamin, minawa. Gigawabamin, minawa, nanabuju. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you too, buddy. I kind of wanted to get him off the line. <laughs> yeah, he's he sort of scares me. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. He has killed before. I don't think I need to be on uh, Alec Baldwin's short list of people he doesn't like. He doesn't like that Trump either, huh? No, he really doesn't like Donald Trump. Yeah. But. I don't know. <laughs> What? Alec Baldwin. Is he ever going to face any jail time for, uh, you know, murder? I don't think so. I think it was an accident, so he gets to go home and be free. 
Wow, must be nice. I know, huh? <laughs> Let's see who else is here. Come and get your love. I don't know why, Red Corn Days. I'm Wally. What are you guys talking about? I got sick again. I hate to do it, but gonna go in and get tested for COVID also. Uh, Redbone's down with the sickness, sweetie. <laughs> He's down with the sickness? Yep. <laughs> well, I hope you feel better soon. You know, in the Ojibwe way, I word for uh, sickness is a cozy. Nina cozy. Oh, I'm feeling sick. But it's also kind of the word for being out of balance. You know? Most of the time, we're not just sick, sweetie. That's true, huh? You know, you can be physically sick, but sometimes that's brought on by mental stress or unresolved grief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can be spiritually dead, and that can infect your physical body. You know, people who get, like, really fat. Yeah. Sometimes they got like spiritual problems or they're lost touch with their souls or something. And so they become out of balance and they eat too much. They're alcoholics too, you know. So today I would like to discuss, well, first of all, here's the, the words again, sweetie. Today the Ojibwe words of the day. Dibwewin is truth. What is truth, sweetie? That's the truth, Ruth. Um, what is truth? Yeah. It's, uh, subjective. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, no, that's just the opposite of what I'm thinking. What do you think truth is? I think there is truth. There's objective reality, independent of what we think of it. But I think the truth is that we're all living in a world of Guantanamo. That everything's been a lie. We've been under a spell. And Bogwana is he. We're all dumb. Um, I mean, it just this sounds really arrogant. I don't mean to sound arrogant. But, you know, I'm kind of a recovering New Ager. <laughs> is that what you call it? Yeah. I'm a recovering New Age liberal. Uh, I don't know if I just grew up and grew out of all my magical new age thinking. Um, but I was deep into this, the intersection of science, fiction, I would call it now, the truth. The truth of reality is that I was living and all of us are living under a whole set of lies. And that's what all these conspiracy theories really ultimately point to. They're all related. Every conspiracy theory we've been trained to mock and laugh at, whether it's aliens, John F. Kennedy, the moon landing, the shape of the earth, the Bible, uh, the flood, Santa Claus, they're all related. To make us believe, some, number one, to believe that there is no truth that we're probably living in an illusion so much, not even an illusion, that truth itself doesn't exist. You know? Um, and we could talk for the rest of the year about just this subject. I haven't figured it all out, but, you know. Like just one thing, if you know, basically, you know, all the conspiracy theories are evidence of there's been a cover-up. Somebody's lied to us about a truth that we're, they don't want us to know. There is a they out there. All the world's a stage. And Satan's the director. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, but we're, we've all been dumbed down because we've been lied to so much. Whether it's, uh, you know, the Big Bang Theory. You know, that is a conspiracy theory that we get mocked for. 
And they say, oh yeah, these Bible thumping believers don't even believe the scientists. They're anti-science. You know, they're they deny, they're science deniers. It's like, why would they lie about a big bang? We've all been kind of trained, we're all hypnotized. Like, well, they at worst they're not lying. At worst, they're just wrong. They're doing all this totally legit science work and coming up with theories based in truth, the way when, you know, it's science, it's the truth. But at every turn, once your eyes are open, for those who have eyes to see, Jesus said, I think it was Jesus. You go, what, they lied about that too? That's not true, that's not true. You keep on uncovering, you know, the, you start to peel the onion and you go, what? Why, you know, how does Santa Claus fit into this? <laughs> you know, I don't even know where to start. But Dobwewen, in his seven Anishinaabe teachings, truth is one of the seven of the values. Truth is uh, represented by a turtle. Mishike. Mishike Minise. And the uh, turtle. Oh, let me get rid of that. Walks very slow and is very old. And is also the shape of the real earth. Yeah. Biblically, you could make an argument that, uh, you know, the, that fact, the Bible describes the earth being like a, with a dome over it, a flat surface immovable on four pillars, four corners, looking over this as though it were a footstool or a turtle <laughs> or a turtle shell. You know, are we living in a turtle? Is that the truth? There's a shell over us. I don't know. All I know for sure, sweetie, is that the Mukade we Bajike, the black moon, I think the black moon is a uh, solar eclipse. That looks like a diamond ring. I know, huh? Science doesn't want to talk about this. They, they hope we forget that every so often the moon covers up the sun perfectly, like two quarters, like uh, something that was made in a machine shop. <laughs> yeah, like totally machine crafted, you know, just perfectly, you know, the moon doesn't even look like a sphere to me. It looks like a flat coin or something, but... I don't know. The boy win. That's the truth. Somebody took a picture of that and went, yeah, that's, that happens. Oh, what do the scientists say? Oh, well, you know, just dumb luck. The sun happens to be 400 times farther away and 400 times bigger. It's just a perfect, dumb, uh, you know, never mind. We worked it out. We know exactly how far away the sun is and exactly how big it is. We did the, you know, nobody's even questioning us anymore. But yeah, I'm questioning you, science. How did you figure out how big and far away the sun is? How did you do that? Did you send a spaceship out? Let's see the footage. <laughs> a spaceship, I don't believe, you know, it's all lie after lie after lie. For, for generations, lies built upon lies. You know, in the Bible it says that, that Satan is the father of lies. Yeah, it does. He was the first one to say a lie in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, yeah. He's the father of lies. But when you question, <laughs> when you just call BS, just if you're cocky enough to go, no. That's a lie. You guys lied about that. Nothing about outer space 
is what you de describe is true. You don't know. Nobody's been out there. There's no out there. You know, they call you dumb. Bhagwana is he? Oh, that guy's Bhagwana is he? Bhagwana is. Gee, Bhagwana is. You're dumb. You're dumb. <laughs> But it's not dumb when you believe a lie. You're just, you can't help it. I know, it's like being hypnotized. That's what it is. You know. Dumb is just refusing to think about it. And so part of the spell, I think, and the part, certainly the spell I was under most of my life was, you know, I was, actually, I wasn't, I, Occasionally, I was dumb when I would mock the people who didn't accept what science said. But mostly, I was open-minded enough to know that I could be wrong. So like when I was really into science and thought people who believed the Bible were dumb, <laughs> I didn't really scoff at them going, believing that the world was created in six days. I just kind of thought, well, they're kind of dumb. Or they're just simple-minded, maybe. Uh, but then, as I got older, I was like, no, wait a minute. The science believers are the dumb ones. They're just allowing random people. You have no idea, no way to vet whether or not they're liars. One thing you know is that they're not religious people. That's the only thing that they completely share is that, oh, these are, hi, I'm a scientist. Everything I do and all the, every, the, my message in the, at the end of the day is truth, de win is not what the Bible says. It's what we say, the scientists. I'm an astrophysicist. Oh, impressive. What is an astrophysicist? You know, um, I majored in math. Yeah, whatever. You know what the largest uh, telescope is called? In the Vatican City or whatever? Is it in the Vatican City? Yeah, I think it is. It's the only two, it's like a binocular telescope. But yeah, you want to tell them? It's Lucifer. Yeah, I know. I mean, it, is, it doesn't, it's not just called the Lucifer. It's called the Lucifer, but each of those letters stand for something. The largest telescope staring into space. That's how you can kind of see the fingerprints of Satan behind all this outer space stuff. It's all satanic. <laughs> yeah. That's why I think those gray aliens are demons now. Yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> Should I start talking to the crew more? You want to get a discussion started? <laughs> kind of running out of time, to tell you the truth. Should we talk about boarding schools? That's so depressing. I know, but I kind of wanted to play home again. <laughs> okay. So, if anybody's new to the channel. Hey, Papa Bagosh is here, sweetie. Well, bonjour, Papa Bagosh. How you doing? Surrealist is here. Before I talk about boarding schools, I want to see if there's anybody new here. Come and get your love. Uh... So yeah, boarding schools, once again. There was something else in that old Dabajimun uh, newspaper. They said there's a new... I didn't understand this at all. In last month's Dabajimun, article on there I didn't read, but the headline, and there was an you know, illustration of a map that said Minnesota had so many boarding schools. And there was three on Leech Lake. I was like, what? I knew Red Lake had one, St. Mary's. But they were saying, like, yeah, you know, they're doing all this research. How many boarding schools were there in history? It's like, we, what, we don't know? What are you talking about? I think we know exactly where it wasn't that long ago. But they had a map there with a bunch of 
dots on where boarding residential schools in the old days in Minnesota. And we have the most schools outside of uh, Alaska and somewhere else. I was like, I never heard that. I mean, it's Pipestone in Flan Flandreau, South Dakota. Is Pipestone, Minnesota, or where, what is that? It's Pipestone. Yeah, I think it's Minnesota. I don't know. Beats me. But anyway, uh, so the boarding schools. Um, anyone new to the show, this is a podcast, a live stream podcast, where we're just riffing, honestly. You know. Uh, Michael's book, in some ways it did start with this book, didn't it, Mike, Michael? Dog and Mangan? Yeah. That started the um, Ojibwe language part of my cartooning career. What year was it when you actually drew this? Oh, it was, I was working at tribal college. So what was that, like 13 years ago? 14 years ago? 14 years ago? Yeah. So Michael was a, you know, you're already a cartoonist by the time he did this. But uh, when Michael uh, drew Dog and Mangan, it was his first like Ojibwe language children's book. And just kind of shared it around the res, right? Yeah, I gave it away a lot. And um, I think I tried to get it published, but I, I never did. So then I just ended up selling it on Amazon. Yeah. And then when did Ojibberish start? Ojibberish started right after that. So then Michael had an Ojibberish comic strip that he would just share uh, on Facebook, right? Yep. And then uh, you could link and order Dog and Manga. Well, pretty soon people started writing in. They were like, how do you say these words? <laughs> you know, what in the world? How would one pronounce M-A apostrophe I-I-N-G-A-N? And so we thought, well, you know what? Let's, uh, let's record. I can get up here. We'll turn on a camera. The original videos were just uh, the, the camera that comes with a laptop. I know. The quality is really bad. Yeah. But so people could hear how to say the words. And then it just sort of turned into, uh, you know, this sort of YouTube stand-up comedy. I don't know who I think I am, but... I think the closest thing we are... Yeah? ...is a grown-up Sesame Street. You think we're like Sesame Street? Or The Muppet Show, maybe. No, closer to Sesame Street because we do teach. Yeah, I guess you're right. I've always, I've thought, not always, but I, I sometimes think we're like if Ernie and Bert, uh, if they really tried to develop the Ernie and Bert's life and weren't so concerned with the rest of Sesame Street. Wouldn't you kind of like to watch a, a movie about Ernie and Bert that was like us where they just talk seriously? <laughs> They for sure would make them gay. I know. That's why I wouldn't want to see it. Sesame Street's so woke. <laughs> but so the boarding schools. Oh, so anyway. Also, um, a lot of this was, was, was born out of both of Michael's um, grandparents went to the Flandreau Indian Boarding School back in the day. And the boarding school era is really the, the, the period when Anishinaabe people lost their language. And, I mean, people say, oh, they stole our culture. But it's not like they stole the Anishinaabe culture and then kept it for themselves. We just picked up, you know, the dominant culture, you know, European ways and the language and stuff. And so a lot of the uh, seventh generation people, which I don't know if it's my generation or my kids, the next generation, what it was, but there was, a, there was an old Indian prophecy that said there's seven generations of bad times for Indian people. But the seventh generation kids will come and pick up the things that their ancestors left behind. And we were going to try to piece together what happened. Not just what happened, but what it was like before the boarding schools. 
Um, and in a way, so Michael's, you know, grandparents went to boarding school and they didn't, they didn't speak the language. You know, they they throw around little phrases here and there. His grandpa probably knew more than his grandma. But like a lot of Indian people, you know, we could say, come and eat, and thanks, Grandma. <laughs> but in Ojibwe, but the rest, it was English, you know. So kind of reconnecting with uh, um, the culture and stuff is reconnecting with your grandparents. And Michael wrote a song about his grandfather and his grandfather's experience with the Flandreau Indian Boarding School. And it's called a song called Home that, are you on this at all? You know what? I don't think I sing on this song. Do I? I think it's just you and Michael. Oh, okay. So Michael's on the guitar and I'm singing the song. And this is Home. Up next, the lovely and talented Natasha. Miigwech bizendawiyag. Thank you for listening. I was born in 1913 In the storm of 1913 But then at boarding school I was nobody's fool Down at Flandreau I grew madder every day That's why I had to run away Cause this is no way No way to live And I wanna go If we can make it to them tracks, we won't be coming back. We're gonna hop a train. I thought we got away. But then the cops came and took us back to a leather strap. But I wanna go home I wanna go home I wanna go home I wanna go Got right up and I walked right out 
The teacher said to me, where do you think you're going? Boy, I said I'm going home. I want to go home. I want to go home. Me we Giwe home. Bonjour, Natasha Nandishan Okaz. Oh, wow, it's just pretty out here. Mika Wadesi Agua Ching. It's beautiful outside. Oh, wow. <laughs> What's going on? How you doing, everybody? Just wanted to come outside. Oh, I'm not a bougie. You really chose a beautiful spot. Oh, wow. Basic nishness, way, ni, win. Not in, 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 good, was, way. Need was, way. Nishwa sway, Junga sway, and Midda sway. So many birds, too many to count. Ho wa, ho wa, banishi yug, banishi birds. <laughs> All right. Just a pinch of a sema between your chicken gums. No. <laughs> Do people still chew tobacco? I guess I see that they sell them in gas stations, but... I haven't seen a person, like, spit chewing tobacco in years. I don't think society tolerates spitting anymore. <laughs> and it must have been a pain in the neck for guys who like to have chewing tobacco. During the COVID thing, when everyone's wearing masks, you gotta sp take off your mask to spit. Not the most uh, hygienic thing I've ever heard of, but you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, tobacco, a sema. Kitchimanadu, great spirit. Nusana wak wing a beyond. Our Father who art in heaven. <laughs> Um, what else do we call you? Nibaba! Dad? <laughs> oh, great spirit! Creator! I don't know. Um. Ninyan Natasha. This is Natasha. The car we took a wishin on dome in a way noon gum. Please help me to speak well today. <laughs> Please keep the bugs out of my face. No. Um, mi quach ka iji ka kina kiku ka iji chikan noon gum. Thank you for everything that you do today. Mi quach mi kawada zi. Um, Way back. Thank you for the beautiful weather. Mika, what is he? Um, Mika, what is he on? Thank you for my life. Mika, what is he? Mika, what is he? Thank you for healing my grief. 
Gwetch biz and dolly egg. Thank you for listening. A bay and gay. A dapanani we asema. Amen. Except my tobacco. And then I just sprinkle some on the ground. Tobacco offering. You can offer it to the uh, four directions if you want. Offer it to Mother Earth. Offer it to the water. I've heard of guys offering tobacco before they go fishing. <laughs> they say a little prayer, put some tobacco in the water for good fishing. It must work or they wouldn't do it. <laughs> what kind of bait do you use? Oh, you know, tobacco. <laughs> prayer. <laughs> but, you know. Get him on a do great spirit. What can I say? What am I gonna say? La di da. Okay, hey, baby. Oh, gee. Here's a bird over there talking to me. Yeah, I'm trying to do a show, you guys. Would you hold it down? I'm trying to teach language and culture to the people. <laughs> no. So, fish like crackers better. Do they like the, yeah, I bet you crackers are. That's like fish food. <laughs> Fishing. Gigun. Fish. I'm from the bullhead clan. I was sassy nin nindo dam. Nindo dam. The fish clan, or the bullhead, the fish clan. Or no, bullhead. But not bull like cows, but bull like those little black fish, kind of like a catfish. Up in Minnesota, we got these really little black, icky <laughs> fish. But if you're a bullhead clan, you can't eat it. You can eat all the other kind of fish, but you're not supposed to eat the, the, the food of the clan you belong to. You know? I'm just glad I don't belong to the chicken clan. Bakakokwanak! <laughs> Nindo I'm from the chicken clan. Is there a chicken clan? I don't think so. There's a Ku Klux clan <laughs> that they tell me. I don't know if that's still a thing or not. The clans. Here's a question for the Nana Buju. For the Buju crew. Um. Is tribal enrollment racist? No, no, not even tribal enrollment. Is, are Indians racist? Are we the last people who are allowed to discriminate membership based on race? <laughs> you know, how come that's not considered racist? We're like, yes, this is the Leech Lake Reservation. No blacks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, I'm sorry. We're gonna have to. Look. Who is your ancestors? Prove your ethnic lineage. You want to be part of our club? You got to be the right race and enough of the race. If you don't have pure Indian blood, eventually you you won't be an Indian at all. But it is kind of discrimination. We discriminate based on race. This is an Indian reservation. No whiteies allowed. <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah, you can move here and buy land and do whatever you like. We can't really buy. Can you buy land? I heard that like 98% of Leech Lake property is owned by non-Indians. I don't know if that's true or not, but... So you can, you can totally welcome aboard. You can come and build a town right on the res. But you want to be part of the membership. Sorry, we're an exclusive club based on race. Come on. <laughs> Sunny day. La dee da dee. A-OK. 
okay. So, now the Buju talked about the medicine wheel a little bit. Mushkiki de Tibisade. And even though the weather is beautiful, sometimes a change of seasons can bring on old, you know, psychic wounds of grief. Old, you know, scars. <laughs> sometimes scars can be picked open. Old wounds can be picked open by you know, the sound of birds and the wind because it reminds you of somebody or maybe they passed. I've also noticed that when at the time of seasons changing it seems like it's a active time for people to start their journeys. Maybe it's just elders, I don't know. But if you're feeling sick, if you're a cozy, if you're out of balance, you know, there's more to life than just <laughs> vaccinations. You gotta, you gotta think about your whole state of being. So the medicine wheel kind of represents four of everything: the four directions, the four races, the four states of being, the four elements, the four everything's fours. It also means physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. You know, if you're sick, you know, yeah, your body's probably detoxing itself with snot and coughing and fever, you know, going through a thing that's kind of unpleasant. But it's connected to the mental. If you are stressed out, you know, you are stressed to the max. You're having problems at work, problems at home. You're sick. You're out of shape. You know, your wife just left you because you got too fat. <laughs> you know, because you're always drunk. You're hungover. You know, you're out of balance. You know, fix your mental. And that's attached to your emotional. Now you got self loathing. You lost your wife. And she's all, you know. Hooking up with a younger guy, a, from Chad from accounting or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, now you're all depressed and you look at your life and go, well, look at me, I'm a fat loser. My wife left me. And that's connected to your spiritual. It's like, what happened there? How did you get so out of balance that your love turned into love of pizza and beer and going to the club or whatever your problem was that made your wife hate you and turned you sick. I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, anybody here today is sick because they drink too much or anything, but I mean, we all get in this state. You can just spiral and get out of control and then your whole, it's all, you know. So the trick to get yourself well again is write it down. Think about your life in these four areas. Look at yourself and go, okay, physically, what's going on? How am I? If you're generally a healthy person, you just happen to have COVID, well, suck it up. That's not the worst thing, <laughs> you know. But are you sick all the time because you're out of balance and your diet's no good and you drink too much and you smoke too much and you eat too much sugar? You know... Well, write it down. What are you going to do? Might be time to go on a hardcore diet. Get pumped. Go buy some new groceries and get physical. Start doing the walk. Give up the uh, sugar. Throw out the stupid whatever you don't need. It's not worth it. You're going to feel better if you don't eat birthday cake. Then think about your mental. Write it down. What are you going to do? What is it like? Are you mentally ill? You know, nobody ever wants to be honest with themselves. Like, yep, guess what? I am mentally ill. I am sick with worry. I'm always stressed. I got anxiety. I'm sick with depression and my memories and my broken heart. 
you know, write it down. What's going on? And what are you going to do about it? You can do something about it, just like going on a diet. Your mental health. Make a plan. Do you need to go see a therapist? Do you need to get on those antidepressants? Do you need um, to work? Do you need to apologize to somebody? Do you need to, you know, what's going on in your mind? What mentally can you do? Do you need to tell yourself once and for all, okay, that's it. I'm not going to think anymore about how that person wronged me and broke my heart. That's over. I'm going to stop thinking. Make yourself. Make a plan. And get to your emotions. What are they like? Are you always crying? Are you always afraid? Are you always angry? Are you always feeling dread? Like, oh no, I don't want to have to go do this thing. Know what it is. Make a plan. Um, you know, if certain activities draw your emotions to a certain thing, just realize that you're not your emotions. You have emotions. Now you have anger. You say, oh, I'm angry. No, you're not. You have anger. Is it because of what you're thinking about? Oh, those darn oil pipelines, they're going to pollute the earth. I'm so mad. Are you? Or is that just a convenient thing to think about because it makes you not think about this other thing that's actually making you sad? Make a plan. And then finally, there's spiritual. You know, everybody is a spirit. Want to do? That's who you really are. You know, we all strut around in our bodies like, "Ooh, look at me!" But our bodies are just these things we drive around for a short time. That change every day, a little bit, until we're old people, and until we go back to just being a spirit do we drop over and float away from our old dead body but before that day you can sort out stuff by getting spiritual what does that mean you might have to research a little bit go call up somebody who knows who you respect that knows God whether it's a traditional person or your old grandma, you know, when she seems to be okay, <laughs> when everyone else is freaking out over somebody dying because she believes in heaven, go to her, ask her, okay, what do you know? This is what's going on with me. But also, you know, what is spiritual? It's anything that's not material. So you can, you know, Get spiritual. Go for a walk in nature. Sing a song. It's not mental. You don't have to think about your spiritual thing. But, you you know, people kind of already know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. Pray. When uh, S hits the fan, most of us immediately know the wisdom of get on your knees, pray. I heard somebody say recently, when you, when you cry, pray, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the most powerful prayer there is. I don't know how they know that, but don't be afraid to have a good cry prayer. Get real, talk to your creator. You have the right. And all together, you know, this is how you uh, work out your stuff is what I think and this has been <laughs> your moment of Auntie Natasha's wisdom Auntie Natasha's in. I hope nobody who's my elder was listening going hey little upstart tell me and something I already know that was kind of a talk for kids but anyway I should go back One last thing. 
if you're suffering, which if you're not, <laughs> well done. A lot of people are having a hard time these days. And you always feel like you're the only one in the world. Well, guess what, sister and brother? Um, even though we don't always share it with each other, you are in great company. Even your crabby old uncle who looks like he doesn't have a care in the world, he's got some grief. He's scared of certain things. He's got regrets. He's just, you know... All of us share <laughs> this experience of being out of balance. So sometimes, too, if you're really kind of not doing great, you're not going to want to talk about it. Michael had a cartoon once. It was a little skunk. It was raining on him, and the caption was, I can't talk about it. Well, do anyway. Find somebody to talk about it with. You know, that's spiritual and mental and physical and emotional. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Okay, bonjour. Hi, sweetie. You ready to come home? Yeah. That's a beautiful place it teleported me, though. Yeah, I thought you might like that. All right, uh, let's see. One to teleport. Make it so, number one. <laughs> no. Oh, there she is. Hey, baby doll. Did you say a prayer? Yeah, I did. And then I started talking about the medicine wheel. And uh, I was sort of hoping like a little kid would watch sometime. Yeah, you know, we should do a show just on the medicine wheel and how you can use it to get out of depression and stuff. You think we should do another depression show? I always cry when we do depression shows. Well, it's because you always want to talk about princess. <laughs> Let's not talk about princess. Princess is our cat who passed away. And every time we talk about like mental health stuff or spiritual stuff, I always got to talk about our little princess because we loved her so much. Yeah, I know, but we don't need to be crying in front of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it might be time. Maybe tomorrow or we could do an evening show or something. You know, um, should we wait? Until the, the new the new beginning of the show or whatever you want to call it. Will we revamp the show? Maybe. Or we could just do it. Or maybe tomorrow we can talk about grief relief. Yeah, let's do that. Um, Tune in tomorrow for more discussion on grief, being out of balance. Michael Lyons has a book called Grief Relief, which is a comic book that aligns the stages of grief. And kind of talks about this alien Steven and this skunk Zhagog. All of Michael's uh, characters have Ojibwe names. Yeah, except for Steven. <laughs> oh, yeah, except for Steven. Steven is not the Ojibwe word for gray alien. <laughs> but, um, yeah, maybe tomorrow we should talk about that. If we can do it in a funny way. I'm going to totally bail if it, if it makes me want to cry. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Michael, you want to add anything? No, that's great. Thanks a lot. All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Boozhoo, nana boozhoo. Um, we forgot to have the count on again. Yeah, we did, didn't we? We can have them on tomorrow. Tune in tomorrow for a very special appearance by none other than Count Von Count of Sesame Street will be our special guest on Boujou Nana Boujou live stream podcast. The podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I am Natasha. This over here. This over here. Nana Boujou. Okay, miigwech. And then this over here, rock star cartoonist Michael Lyons. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. And I will see you again. Gigawaba men. Minawa. Oh. All right, baby. One more time. One more time. 
Do I start or do you? Uh, I start. A one to teleport. Make it so, number one. See you tomorrow. <laughs>